Hello everyone and welcome to this new part of a series where we are building a React application. Now in this part we'll be working on the sidebar navigation. As you can see this is a demonstration of the final result after finishing this tutorial. The whole layout actually is put together using grid CSS and the sidebar of course also use the float box and some cool animation with cubic bezier so as you can see the sidebar adapt to the sizes of the screen so if it's uh, very tight uh, widely this will be scrolled and we'll style the scroll with some css also for mobile if we go to mobile it will be hidden and there will be a toggle button to open the sidebar and close it all right so let's get started here in my code so first thing as a reminder if we look at our application now this is how we left off from our previous part in our previous part we have created a theme with the css variables so if i open the global style here you can see we have created some global styles that contain variables some color variables some spacing and font sizes for the input also and the button and uh, some of them were made responsive with the media max query so this is as a reminder now we we'll continue the work done from the last part to create the sidebar that will use this variable and the color theme here we specify now if i go to my component the first thing i will create is a layout so i create a folder for the layout the header the sidebar and uh, in case we were we have footer so i create a new folder i will name it layout inside this folder there will be a file a component called layout.js this component will hold the whole layout so it will it will contain a proper diff which will be like the container for uh, our website inside of it there will be the header or more appropriately the navigation which will leave it empty for now then the header then the main which will uh, have the content of uh, the page and will include the children from the prop will uh, get the children here by destructuring it then we'll export uh, default the layout now here in the nav i will write nav bar now we already have created a header so i will move this header to the layout all right then i will import the header in my layout from nearby the header and i will use it instead of this header here now again if i look to my header this is my header here so i will keep the tag header for now and i will put the new header here here in my header i'll make sure everything is is work is correct now since i change the location of the header i want to make sure the component app.js that use the header is pointed correctly to it so here header dot slash okay first of all we don't need in the component in the app.js anymore the header all right since it has been used in the layout now concerning the layout we will use it not in the app to rob the whole application because some pages like the sign in page don't need a sidebar here i have the component i have the folder for the ui i will create a new folder for the pages here i create a folder called pages now in the in the page i'll move the sign in and we have also the book details and the book list so we have these three components i'll move them to the pages 
Now some other errors will pop up concerning the past names. We will fix them. Plus we will add a page called home.js which would be the home or dashboard something to fill in the place of the landing page after signing in so we'll create a function named home it will return now here we will start start using the layout for the first time it will return a layout component slash the layout and layout here we we'll use the layout now inside of the layout we'll put an h1 is welcome to booklet welcome to actually i will change the name of this application from books to store it will be welcome to store lord uh, it will be actually a store not a i will change the subject of the application from bookstore to to a general store then it will have two paragraph one that will say book club homepage dashboard the other under construction this is concerning the home page the same for the list book list and book details we'll import also the layout and we'll use it to wrap our application here we'll add instead of the div the layout we keep the class name now uh, in the layout of course i will get the rest of the props and i will pass them to the to my first element so in case we want to add any class or any attribute we can now back to my book list here i use the layout the same for my book details and wrap my content with the layout instead of this div now in my app.js i'll also import the new component the home page and i'll use the home page instead here of the hard-coded html element now for the home page but it will be of course a private route so it's not it's not publicly accessible as it was before now here for the naming i will change for the private route i will name it books and i will remove books i will create i will name it products and the same for the other route what else now let's fix the the error concerning the passes first in the app.js here concerning the imports now they are in the page folder so we need to point to the page folder all right for the home page it seems we forgot to export the component in the book list now we need to go back one folder then we need to go to the components the same for the book item the same in the book details for all of these components we need to add slash component now and we need to go back a directory all right so that's it all right as you can see we have the nav bar we have the header here all right then the main which contain the content of the page next we'll start to create the layout using the grid css now here we have the nav element and the header and the main stacked vertically so to illustrate here is what we have they are staked vertically and dropped in a div now the result that we want is this now to create this uh, layout we will rely on the grid First, we will add to the proper display grid, which will create a grid, and the element here will be grid items. Now, by default, they will be stacked in rows, so the display won't change. Next, after creating the grid, we need to specify the columns and rows for the grid. So, let's do this. 
first I will style the roper by importing the styled from styled component I will create a new component I will name it grid that will contain the style so it will be equal to style.dev inside of it there will be display grid now as I told you this will create a grid if I go check my browser now nothing will change so they will be also stacked vertically in a rows to change this I need to create columns so I can use the grid template columns to create columns now I can provide them 1FR or uh, 150-150 FR is a, is, a, is a fraction which similar to flexbox it will automatically create portions so here we are saying divide it into two portion okay. then we'll have the grid template rows which also will be let's say 1FR 1FR so it will be a grid with two columns and two rows we'll apply the grid instead of the div now if we check our browser you will see we have our grid here which contains two columns and two rows now each item will fill the rows then as you can see the navbar fills the first row the header the second the main with the main go to the second row and fill the first column and the last column is empty now this is good but we need the navbar to fill two rows here as our layout suggests the navbar will fill two rows so let's do this for the navbar to fill two rows we need to set some rules to the navbar so we'll create a component to replace the navbar which will be grid nav and will be styled dot nav so to specify the area of the nav the grid automatically will add some lines that will help us define the area of each item so for the rows there will be three lines for the start and end of each row here the first line will be numbered one the second line will be numbered two and the last line will be numbered three the same for the column one two and three uh, for the row i mean one two and three so we'll use this numbering system to specify the area of the nav now here i can use grid column start to specify the start of this item so it will start with one and grid column and it will end also it will end with two so here if i go back to the illustration i am saying for the nav bar items it need to start with one and end with line two so it will occupy only one column now for the rows i need also to occupy two rows here so it will start with line one for the rows and end with line three now the same for the row start one and end three first i need to apply this component instead of the nav now if i check my application here it is we have the nav bar that occupies two rows now there's a shorthand for this for the column there's the grid columns which will take the two values of the start and end so it will be one slash two we can make sure that the layout stays the same and the same for the grid row one slash three all right now here concerning these numbers i can use some keyword like span here instead of naming the third line i can tell it to span to line so this will span two line so i will get also the same layout now there's also a shorthand for all of this which is grid dash area which specify all these values now grid dash area 
will start with uh, with row start then column start then row end then column end all separated by slash first we'll set the row start then the column start then now the row end will be span 2 and the column end will be 2 so this is similar we'll have the same layout all right next we need to work here on the uh, area sizes on the template of the column and row as the illustration show what we need is for the first column to fit the size of the nav bar the next column will take the rest of the space of the available space in the window now for the row the same way it will fit the header and the second row will expand the rest of the window so to specify this here in the grid template column we have a keyword that say min dash content using the min content the first column will fit the size of its content the next is 1fr it will fill the rest of the window whatever the content are so here if we go back to our illustration in the first column we have the nav bar so it will fit whatever the nav bar size is and the second column will take the rest of the space of the window so this is for the column as you can see now i am free to set the size of the nav bar to whatever i want this layout will give me flexibility to set the size of the nav bar the way i want so here what i can do for the nav bar is set for example a width of let's say 250 pixel the the grid will adapt because of the min, min content we have set here now for the rows now for the rows it will be the same min content then one fr so here what we are saying for the first row fill the content for the second row the size will be the rest of the uh, window here the for the first row it will rely on the header the first row will take the header so let me set the height of the nav bar now to be 100 view height which will fill the wall viewport here all right so as you can see the nav bar now fill the wall height of our window but the grid adapt to this situation by keeping the first row to fit the content of the header because the nav bar sp span into two rows so it will rely on the header now what i can do here is use a shortcut the grid template which will take the row then the column values replacing these both these two rules now there is different syntax and way for example the grid template support another syntax and the grid area also support another syntax now the syntax i want to use is grid for the grid template is this the follow now as i explained to you here this line or these delimiters are automatically generated but we can rename this line to anything we want so here instead of one we can name it nav bar start or nav start and here we can name this nav end for the header we can give here header start a line can have two names and here it will have the header end for the columns for the row the same way also apply to change the name we use the brackets and put the name here i can type row dash one dash start and here i can name row dash two dash end and i can give it two names actually row two and and row two start as you can see and and the same way continue for the rest and for the column two 
this is how I change the name of the rows and these names I can use them for example to specify here instead of using the number one I can use the name row one star but without the of course uh, brackets I can use this name it will be the same instead of the one I use custom name now the one still apply let me show you now I added some couple of name if I go, I go to my app all right now nothing has changed all right if I instead of one for the row if I choose here the name just to show you that how it works and for the column here I can use also a name let's start with this single change here so nothing has changed actually so I can also rely on the name for the here for the two this is zero here I can for the span you need to give it a number plus I can get rid of the span as I told you and specify the line that it need to end now here it need to end in line three we haven't specified the name of the line three I can type here row dash end I can name it whatever I want and here I can specify the name row end and we get back our layout so as you can see naming work as expected now I'm explaining you about the name to show you one thing here what I want to show you is concerning the, the grid template it has a second syntax all right which rely on the area name now the area name is different than the line name let me show you what you can do you can name the area I can name this area here nav bar and this area I can name it header and this I can name it main what will happen implicitly is when you name an area for example let's say we name this nav bar this line will have the name explicitly will be set in names let me show you how we can do this inside accolades I can set names here let's say nav and header then nav then main right I will explain you what here ha is happening let me put them in a way more clearer so this is our layout if you put them like this you can see that we are creating two rows each row has two columns now each time we need to create a row we'll add another set of columns delimited by codes and separate it with a space so here we're adding two rows each row has two columns now for the first row it will have two columns the first column will have the nav the second column will have the header now for the second row it will also have two columns for the first column it will have the nav and for the second one it has the main here I removed the grid template which will remove the sizes of each column and row so if I keep this what I will have is two columns and two rows with the default sizes now this grid template also support the sizes here now for the first row I need the mean content now for the second row I need the one one fr now for the column I'll add slash remember these here I set the rows I add slash and set the column sizes the column sizes will be mean content and one fr now if I save I get my layout back as you can see this is another way to specify the grid template now this has an advantage these names can be used on items to specify its area instead of specify the start for the row and the start for the column and the and the end for the row and column I can just type the nav without quotes so by giving it the name of the area here it will occupy the area specified in the grid template so if I go back to my layout here it is my layout again all right so this is great let me add a background color to, my, to the nav I should have done it from the beginning it will make things easier all right with color white for the text now 
as I told you, I will give the nav bar the height of 100 view height. Here it is. It, it, it filled the whole page and I can give it a width. Width 250 pixel. Also, the our layout will adapt because of using the main content here. This will help us to have a flexible. As you will see, we will resize this header on demand. So we'll give the capability for the user to expand it and shrink it. Plus, when we are on mobile, we need to hide this header. This all will work perfectly with our current grid template. Let's set the other grid items. So we'll create here grid header, which will be styled dot header, and we'll have the grid area to two header. The same for the main grid main. I will replace the header with grid header. The same for the main. All right. Now for the content here, I will set the min height to 100 view height. Now the same here. I will make it min. So if I go to my browser and check the application one thing i wanted to show you here is concerning the nav the grid area is nav this is a shortcut for the grid row start grid column start nav grid, grid row and nav and grid column and nav so again what specifying here the areas will do is will set the name of the line surrounding uh, this area to nav 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 all right now I will create in the layout another component. It will be called navbar, which will contain the content of the navbar from the menu and the logo and this stuff. So return now a style nav that we'll be creating it shortly. Inside of it, there will be the logo that now it's in the header. So we'll move it from the header. This is our logo. We'll move it from the header and put it in the nav here. We'll change the name to store lore. We'll import style from style component and we'll create our styled nav, which will be equal to style.nav. Now here in my layout, I will change the element type from nav to diff i don't want to to have two nav on top of each other so styled dot nav here it will have the background dash color to black on top of this black i will add the primary color from our theme as an overlay so i want to use the primary color but i want the a darker version of it so i will put it on top of the black with some opacity so to do this i will create i will set the before to content empty content and to have a background color rgba i need here to use the rgba currently in my theme i have the primary color as a hexadecimal now i want to have also the primary color as rgb now the value for this hexadecimal as rbg is these three values now i will do the same for the secondary remember that the secondary color is the blue so uh, i actually want to use the secondary color so var dash dash color dash secondary dash rgb and i'll set the opacity 0.2 then i'll position to absolute which will be 100 percentage the height will be 100 percentage and the z index will be minus one so to be on back of all the content for the styled nav next i need to import this nav bar into my layout so i'll import nav bar from nearby nav bar and i'll use it here instead of this nav bar i'll use the nav bar component so here we need to import the link now instead of importing the link i want to create a new component logo it will be a functional component now inside of it i will return 
now here I will import the link from react router DOM I need also style now I'll create a component called styled link which will be styled it will be the component link with some additional styles for our logo I will set the font size to var dash dash f size dash six now here in my global style I have I want it to be 24 so I'll specify the size 7 so if you if you noticed here I made some changes concerning the font sizes there are new numbers so you can update yours or get it from the github for the font size will be 7 and the font weight will be 700 now for this application i want to use the roboto font from google let me make sure if i have it already no i don't have the font so i will get it from google so here is the font i get it from google if i go now to my global style i will set a variable for my primary font to roboto sans serif and here for the body I'll set also some styles the font size will be by default size 3 and the font family will be the primary font which I just set it at the top now for the background color will be the color light and the color for the text will be dark and here I will set some default values for my header from 1 to 6 they by default they will be semi bold and they will have the sizes specified here plus I will set some default style for the paragraph and the anchor link element so the paragraph will have the font size 4 and the margin by default will be 15 for the top and button for the A I will add the color primary and the hover will have the primary hover currently the primary hover is set to be the same as primary so there will not be a, a change in color when hovering only an underscore will be an underline will be added so this is for the style now back to our logo here now I will replace my link with my styled link which will be rendered at the end as a link so the two here here will apply plus I will get any prop provided and pass it along plus I will add set the color to the primary color then I will set the minimum height to 48 pixel the display will be flex and it will align item center so vertical align will be centered I will also add some padding the, the left will be 25 and the right will be 20 and a border a border button a light white border plus on on hover i will remove the text decoration for the link which is set by default in my global style and that's it now in my nav bar i will import the logo now before importing the logo i want to actually change the place of the logo here in my directory so in, in the layout i'll create a folder with the same name as the nav bar which contain any component related to the nav bar inside of it I will put the logo here I will import the logo from nav bar slash logo and I'll use it instead of here the h1 element here for the nav bar I'll set the width to 250 pixel now for this width I will store it in my global CSS here I will set the width for a nav bar a variable for the nav bar it will have the 250 pixel value 265 pixel value now if I copy this and in my nav bar I'll use this bar 
so the user have control in the width of the nav bar now in my layout i will remove the style added to the nav bar here for the color and background i will remove it and i will copy the height and paste it here for the nav bar all right now i'll add position relative this is important for the element before to be relative to its parent so here because it is position absolute now the absolute will be relative to the navy to the nav element here the problem is that i'm setting the z index to minus one but uh, for the parent element there is no z index not even here in the layout i can do it here in the nav bar z index i can add it with 1000 all right it work at least it has to be one all right next we'll work on the responsivity of this uh, nav bar so when we are at a screen lesser than desktop let's say lesser than let's say 900 for example this will be this here the sidebar will be hidden if we are more then it will show now once it is hidden we need to add here a button the button here will serve as a toggler to toggle the sidebar open or hidden now here in the header i will add a button that will toggle the nav to show it or hide it on the lower resolution if the resolution is lower than 920 pixel so first i will go to my global style and i will create a variable that will hold my breakpoints which will have the desktop breakpoints which will be 920 pixel for now we have only one breakpoint now i will use the breakpoint here below in my media query instead of specifying a row value i will add the the variable breakpoint now here in my header i'll create a grid so we will have a grid with three columns now the first column will be the button the second column will be a like a, it will act as a spacer to separate both of the button and the user information so it will fill whatever space is available here so for the button it will have the size the grid item will have the size of min content the same for the user info will have the size of main content and the middle element will have the size of 1fr which will occupy the rest of the space so in my header first i'll make sure i have three element for the grid now the first element will have the icon here we'll use the font awesome the other div will be will uh, have a class of mid will be empty for now maybe later we'll add something but for now will be empty now I will remove here the welcome below and the slash, don't, don't want the slash. So here I'll import first uh, the style and I'll create the constant grid. Now the grid will be, will replace the roper div for the header. First we'll have a display of grid then the grid template columns as i said will have a three columns the first one will be main content the second will be one fr and the last one will be also main content so if i have a look now in my browser here i can see my grid now i'm having here an element additional element that is resulting in the creation of uh, an additional row uh, this is the divider element now i will remove this element now the header will have height of 48 pixel and for the align item will have the value of stretch the here we are speaking of the item of the grid now by specifying align items to stretch the height of each item will stretch to fill the grid which has a zero which has a height of 48 
pixel and I will add a padding 0 24 for the left and right there will be 24 pixel padding and for the child which are these divs now here for for the link actually here we don't need to check for the user anymore because the header now is part of the layout which is only available for private routes so now here we are sure that we have the oslot uh, the user now for the dev element i will display as flex and i will specify the item align center now each div will be displayed as a flex and each item inside of it will be centered vertically here is our header as you can see they are centered vertically and i will uh, i will add here a rule for the button i can specify the white space no rope which will prevent uh, roping on white space so here i have the sign out that doesn't rope on space so great now i need to add the toggle function for the header here which i'll send it from the layout so the header will have the a toggle function as a prop and here on click i will call the toggle function now for the desktop size i don't need the bars here only will be available for resolution lesser than the desktop so i will first import the break points object i will import it as bp for short from global style and i will set here a media query this media query it need to be applied only for the first child so i will select the first child and for the i element of the first child i will add the media query for the max width here i will use the bp dot desktop in case the, res the resolution is lesser than desktop will display the i as inline now in case it's we're on desktop will display the display will be none oh here i have created the breakpoint but i haven't exported the breakpoint so i'll add an export for breakpoint all right so in my browser here the, on desktop there's no the toggle button for the head for the sidebar now if i resize it here i get the toggle button now i can increase the size by setting the font size to something bigger font size bar let's try the six and here it is much better now as we have specified this now accept a toggle function now here in my layout which will be responsible for managing the toggle for the header here i create a constant toggle that will be a function that will change a state all right which will create here constant we can say show nav and set show nav which will be equal to use state state by default it will be false now here the toggle need to toggle the show nav we can do this by using the set show nav to be the opposite of what show nav is currently is for the toggle for the i mean for the show nav i will set it to a number actually i don't want to have uh, to have complaint about boolean from react using them as html attribute so i will transform it to number and i will send it to the header as a prop toggle will be equal to toggle now i have the show nav with that i can manipulate the bar depending on the show nav so i will send for the nav bar a prop called visible which will be equal as show, to show nav now inside the nav bar i can check 
whether the variable visible is true or false and act appropriately now here in the nav bar i'll get the props and i will pass them to the parent element so this way we can provide some props at the same time we we'll uh, this component will get the visible prop now here in our style we can use the visible props to do some changes now let's import the breakpoint object now we'll use the breakpoint in our media query breakpoint or for short i'll name it the p here i'll use b p dot desktop and here i uh, need to hide the nav bar i'll set the position to fixed and i will add a translation that will slide the nav bar out of the screen from the left side of the screen so position will be fixed and the transform will be translates ready it will be minus i can i can put here any value let's say to 60 pixel zero zero now here we have an issue we can't use uh, the var nav bar width because we have here the minus sign we cannot just use it like this not even uh, if we add a space so what we can do we can add it like this and use a calculation all right now we can with the calculation to get the negative value of the this variable we can subtract the variable multiplied by two all right this way we get the negative value of nav bar widths i don't know if there is some solution in css that will that will give us the negative value of a variable all right now at desktop i am seeing the nav bar now if i go to ipad or mobile the nav bar will be hidden so now we have the sidebar hidden all right actually now on the mobile it is hidden but in case the user clicked on the toggle button here all right we need to show it so here we are getting the visible variable so we check the visible variable here by sending a function that receive the props as the parameter and checking for prop for p dot visible now if it's if it's true if it's if visible is true so we so the sidebar should be visible we'll set the translate 3d x to zero else we'll set the minus calculation of course we'll put it inside the codes i guess this is it so if i click the all right it will open now i i can't close it because i haven't created a way for the user to, cl to close it other than clicking the toggle bars and now the toggle toggle bars are behind the sidebar now i'm stuck what we need to do next is to add a mask here a transparent dark mask and on clicking it we will close the nav bar now to add a backdrop we'll create in the ui folder a new ui component called backdrop this component will use the styled from styled component and we we'll create the constant and we we'll create a component we'll name it backdrop which will be styled dot diff the position will be fixed with height of 100 view height and the width of 100 view widths the opacity will be zero by default and the pointer events 
will be none so to prevent the backdrop to mask any event on the element behind it the background color will be rgba 000.4 as the opacity now to make this component visible in case the user has clicked the bars we need to have the the visible uh, state sent as a prop for this component so relying on this prop we'll add a function that gets the props and we check for p dot visible if it's true then we'll add the css now here we need this function the css function which allow us to add additional object to our css so here we'll add the opacity one and the pointer event will be all because we need to add a click to the mask so we can hide again the sidebar now we'll export backdrop and we'll import it in our navbar and we'll use it here on the top and we'll give it at the visible which will be equal to prop dot visible so now if i go to my browser and click the toggle i will see the backdrop being displayed now in the layout we can add here for the nav z index 1000 or 2000 sorry here the backdrop will be outside of the style nav and i'll rob them with an empty tag provided by react so if we check now we see that the backdrop backdrop now is behind the uh, nav bar now the backdrop will need a click so on clicking the backdrop we run a function we name it close that should be provided here props dot close that should be provided to navbar by the layout so here in the layout we already have the set show nav or the toggle we already have set a toggle so you give the navbar a close prop which will be equal to the toggle so here i can now click the mask and it will hide the nav bar next we need to add some transition effects so we'll have a smooth animation once we open and close the nav bar now for the transition we need to add a transition for the nav bar and for the mask so first we'll go to the mask the drop uh, the backdrop and here we'll add the transition for the opacity so i can add a transition for the opacity which will be 0.2 second and here's the function for the transition it can be one of the predefined functions like uh, linear or is in out or whatever you want to choose or we can make a custom function with cubic bezier which i prefer now i need to uh, give it a little bit more push in the speed at the end of the transition so it will, st it will start slow and, and speed up quickly more quicker than the is uh, than the available predefined function so i will set for the beginning it will be zero zero for the first point or, or you can say for the first tangent of the point zero zero of the curve so for so here we need to provide four values for the cubic bezier these four values are the value for two point in the axis the first point will be the tangent for the point zero zero and the second point will be the tangent for the point one one so let me explain to you how this works 
So here, the linear will be 0, 0, 1, 1. So by default, there are two points defined in our CSS, the 0, 0 and 1, 1. What we need to provide is point for the tangent here, somewhere in this graph. There will, we need to define a point and this will be the tangent for the point zero zero and we need to provide another point all right for the one one point okay the second point will be the tangent for the for the point one one so this we need to provide these two point for my animation i will define a point of zero four so the animation will start fast then it will slow to one one all right so if i try it now it will start slow then speed up but in our case here it is for one second we have it for 0 0.3 second so if i put it for it to be like this this is our function here so i will add 0 0.4 0 1 1 this is for the mask the backdrop so if i test my animation oh i need to add important because i'm having some issue some automatically generated transition uh, which will be generated in line in the element here if i show you this is my mask some style here will be automatically generated by the style component i haven't yet figured out why how to prevent this so i'm adding import to all my transition so as you can see here is my our transition animation the same will add for the backdrop in my nav bar here below i will add a transition for the transform also i'll use here i'll use here cubic bezier now here i will use different values for when it's open and when it's closed in case it is closed i will use the zero zero point two one in case if it's closed so i need here to add a condition by adding a function and returning the value dependent on the prop variable so here the function will get the prop and i will check for the prop dot visible so if if it's visible i will add the cubic bezier same as the backdrop 0 0.4 0 1 1 i put this into codes i forgot to add the important Now back to my application. Here is my transition. As you can see, it will start slow, but on the close, the start is quick. All right. Now before moving on, working on the content of the nav bar, one thing I want to mention is concerning the uh, CSS grid. Here we have used the grid template to create our grid template now there is another syntax which is the grid now the grid support the syntax of the grid template in additional with grid you can define the value for the implicit grid implicit grid is the auto generated grid so here in our case we have two rows with two columns now what, what happened if we added a fifth item to the grid knowing that this grid supporting four items now if you add a fifth item a row will be auto generated now this row will have as characteristics the same as the last row we have defined so it will have one fr as the value and it will have inside of it two columns with main content and one fr now we can change this behavior so we can say with css that any auto-generated row we need it 
to have 100 pixel and let's say with two or three columns or we can change the general flow of the auto generated grid item so for example if we added here the fifth element instead of having a new row we can say no create a new column now why i'm explaining this because to tell you that grid support the syntax of the grid templates that we were using before in addition with grid you can set the auto uh, generated or implicit grid now why use grid instead of template in here in our example or in general because with grid the auto generated or the implicit grid will be reset the value will be reset so if you have a parent element that define how auto generated rows how they need to be generated now using grid will reset this for our example it's not a big deal nothing will change because this grid is not wrapped in another grid but but always it's safer to use grid this is for the final piece uh, of information concerning the grid now let's get back to our navigation bar and let's start adding the links now here we have only the logo now one thing i have noticed in our navbar behavior so if we're on mobile and we open the navbar the navbar will open with a backdrop now if i resize my window to desktop all right now i am in desktop and the navbar is now always visible and the layout has adapted to the desktop size but the backdrop is still visible this is not what uh, we want so we need to uh, make the backdrop hidden when we're on desktop so we'll add a rule to the backdrop so i go in my ui i open my backdrop content and i will import the breakpoint from i will i will import it as bp from global style and here i will add a media query for the main width of the breakpoint again i will hide the backdrop so if the resolution is desktop or more than desktop the backdrop will be always hidden so if we test now now i close all right i close i open the navbar then i resize my window to desktop all right the backdrop has been gone but now let's get back to our navigation bar and add the links now for my links i will import the link component from react router dom so here i will import and with the link i will create my links here before creating the links first i will explain to you something concerning the uh, layout of the navbar now the navbar will contain two type of links a, a global or prominent links there will be two or maximum three and there will be the application or the service links so these links will be more for example uh, there will be five or ten or maybe even more so we will need two section actually three section one for the logo the other section for the group of links related to the application services or sections and we will have a prominent global links here at the bottom now concerning the group of links here in the middle they will expand to fill the wall spaces left after the logo and the global links have occupied and this middle section that contains the group of links will be scrollable so if there are more links than the available space this section will be scrolled by the user to create this kind of layout we'll be using flex here let's start by creating the links now as i told you there will be a group of links which are, which i will rob them with a div with a class nav link group inside of it i 
we put some links that have an icon we will use font awesome for the icon and the uh, label will be wrapped in a span with a label class here we'll add for example a products link another link will be for customer order now we'll add the two this will be two slash products and here will be two slash let's say orders now here one more thing i want to say i'm getting the link but uh, for this uh, case here we need to get the nav nav link because we need to have an active class to change the style of the active link so i will import nav link as as link so nothing will change in our dom here next we'll have the global uh, links so here we'll have a settings with fa cog for the icon slash settings another link will be for example and the router will be let's say feedback we can see that for now the links are placed as an inline items which is normal let's add some styles to the styled nav that wraps all this element now as you can see we have inside the styled nav one two three four items so we add here in our styled nav so display will be flex and the flex direction will be a column so now if i save i will see actually they are stacked in columns remember that these two links here are grouped in a div now for the nav link group what i can do is also add display uh, flex and flex direction column plus i will add to it a flex grow of one so the group links here will grow to fit the rest of the space now let's style each individual link so now concerning the link i will create a component for the link that will contain the style of the link instead of putting all these styles here the same for the nav link group i will extract a component that will handle also the styling all right so here in my layout navbar folder i will cre create a new file component that i will name it nav link of course it needs the styled from styled component and we know in advance that it needs the nav link as link from react router dom now here concerning the content that will be returned we'll copy what we have in the nav bar now we replace the link with a styled link component that we will create now so we create styled link which will be equal to styled it will extend the actual link styles that we have imported from react router dom and add to it additional styles first the minimum height will be 56 pixel the display will be flex I align items will be center padding 0 24 pixel the font size will use the var dash dash f size dash 4 the font weight will be 500 the color a transparent white then I will add a border top using the box shadow 
0 minus 1 pixel 0 0 with RGBA which will be a very light white now I use the box shadow instead of border because in case we need to animate it will work better box shadow to render in animation than border now for the icon the eye element will have a min height of 22 pixel and a min width also of 22 pixels so it will be a square the font size will be 18 pixel the icon inside of it i want it to be aligned center vertically and horizontally i will rely on the flex for centering the item so the display will be flex align items will be center and the justify content also will be center now here i'm setting it's important to use the min height and min width when using flex to force the height and width to these values so this is for the eye now for the span which wraps the text we'll add a padding left of 14 pixel let's use this component style link instead of the link also let's import the uh, nav link and use it in our nav bar instead of uh, these links here so i will import nav link from nearby now here instead of link i can use here the nav link now i need to display the children of the nav link so what i will do in the nav link i will get the children and an icon name variable and a label to be more precise it will be an icon class name and a label then i'll put the rest of the props in a variable called rest so i provide it with the rest of the props now here i will check the children in case there is children i will display the children else if there's no children i will display this as a default layout this will be our default uh, layout for a link now of course to use the default layout you need to provide an icon class name and the label which will use them here so here we'll uh, remove the link since we are not using it so if we go to our browser all right we can see the style start to look good now we haven't done yet with the with the links what i want to do is use the default layout here so i will provide the icon class name which will be and the label products I'll do the same for the others. right so now we'll make sure everything is working as expected by checking in our browser now some missing labels here because i mistyped the label it's okay and that's fantastic now for the link group here the product and the order will have some different styles they will be more compact 
they will not have the border button and the spacing will be less for the top and button then we'll add some styles to the grouper element of the group that will have overflow that will allow it to scroll now we will create a component for the group but before doing that i noticed here that the alignment of the label and the icon are not perfectly centered now we can solve this with by adding line height of 19 pixel so i will go to my nav bar here and i will add in the nav link for the label a line height of 19 pixel now i can see that there is an underline once i hover also i need to remove this underline so i will add here and hover text decoration i will remove the under uh, none to remove the underline then i will add a background color rgba slash five percent it will be an overlay color of transparent white of five percent now as you can see here i'm showing you another syntax for the rgba so let's try the hover all right here is the hover which worked perfectly now let's work on this section here which contains a group of links so i will create a new component inside the folder navbar inside the layout so i will create nav links group dot js now this will be of course a functional component of course we know in advance we need to import style from style components and we need the nav link now for the return value we'll copy paste the links here in with the robber with it so i'll copy it and put it here next now we need to create a component for the roper that will add the styles now i'll create constant links group which will be equal to the styled dot div now the links group will replace our div here we can get rid of the class we don't need it anymore now for the style here we already have a couple of them created in the nav link i mean in the nav bar here for the class nav link group we have added here some styles which will remove them we don't need them anymore in the nav bar they will be contained inside the nav links group now with i will add a padding top and button for the top 24 pixel for the button 14 pixel and overflow will be hidden in case there's more link and the overflow y will be auto now for the background color i need this section to be a little bit lighter from the rest of the section so i will create an rgba using the secondary color all right secondary color rgb that we have defined in our theme and we'll add to it a transparency of 0.1 i will import the nav link group in my nav bar and i will use it instead of the of this so it will be nav link group all right all right now i made a naming mistake here it will be color dash secondary rgb all right now if we resize our browser as we can see here is our scroll bar now of course we will style the scroll bar to 
work better with this uh, with the dark background now for the scroll bar I have some styles in my clipboard I'll pass them here for the link group proper now these styles allow me to change how this scroll bar will look I can set the width of the scroll bar I can set the background color of the scroll bar track and there's the scroll bar sum I can change it here I'm said I'm, I'm giving it a radius of 4 pixel and a background color of transparent white with 0 0.4 transparency next I'm uh, adding an over let me use the same value here maybe I'll increase it to let's say 0 0.6 for testing and let's have a look how it will look so oh here it is oh this is the hover now I will change it it is too much all right perfect now I need to change the styles of these uh, two links to make them more compact in relation to other to the global links so here my uh, I have the nav link already imported in my nav link group now I want to create from it a new component that will add some style to the nav link to be used just in our nav link groups now I can do this with my uh, styled component library so I'll create a constant dense nav links which will expand the current nav link so I can do this with styled and providing to it the nav the nav link now I can add additional styles for example I can remove the box shadow and for the height I can reduce the height to 36 pixel and I can now use the dense link the same way as the nav link but it will have different styles so here they are still the height is not applied I guess because I have used I should use the min height so here is my links uh, working perfectly and if I check again the scroll bar amazing now next we continue working on the nav links now for two links everything is okay but remember you should be expect to have like 10 or uh, or more links and this current solution is not is not uh, flexible for more links what we need is what we need is to create an array that will hold the information for the links from the label to the icon to the route and we'll map through it uh, here in the uh, render function so we'll create here a constant which will I'll name it links it will be an array of object each object will contain the information for a link starting with the two for our for our first link it will be slash products then we have the icon which will be fas fa dash box and last thing is the label products same for the second link all right uh, now i will add a couple of link more here i added more links one for subscriptions one for automation one for schedule just some dummy links for our demonstration they will be changed later once we build other features in our application now i need to map through these links so here i can using the links i can map through this array now i will name the returned item l just something short for our local purposes l stand for the link now what i want to do is for each item i need to render this component and use the 
property of the object to replace the values of 2 so the 2 will be l dot 2 i can again l dot i can same for the label l dot label we need to add a key the key will be l dot 2 then i need to do one more thing here i need to get the props for this component and pass them to our links group component in case we need to send any prop to this component from uh, its parent so now i remove these two links and i should expect uh, one two three four five links now on the screen all right here is my five links perfect now concerning the links we can extract this link and put it for example inside the z nav bar another solution is we can put it in its own file so it will work as a configuration for the navigation for our purposes at the moment i'll keep it here now uh, here concerning the scroll bar it is good all is good but it's somewhat uh, annoying that is sticking at the far edge of the proper of the link so what i will do i need to add a two pixel spacing from the right so i will go to my nav links group and i will add a margin right of two pixels so here there are some spacing it's uh, it's much better now everything looks fine concerning the uh, this page now if i go to another page let's say products page this page is longer than the other page now if i scroll down what will happen uh, the, the bar will scroll with the content and will disappear and this is not a good experience for the user so what I need to do is I need to this bar to be sticky. So when the user, the user scroll, it will be always available, fixed on the screen. I can do this very easily by changing the, in my nav bar component, I can change the position from relative to sticky and set the top to zero. So it will be sticky at the top of the screen now with these changes i can check my browser and try to scroll again here it is it it is sticky next we'll be adding here a an arrow button that will toggle the bar size so if we click on the button it will shrink the nav bar to only display the icon now let's add this button in our navbar component with a class nav toggle. Now this button will have an icon, an arrow positioned to the right at the beginning or left, I guess, it positioned to the left. Now if I check this button, how it looks in my browser, here it is. It's, uh, it needs some styling, which we'll, we'll add it shortly, but first we'll add the compact functionality. Now, we need a, a, a piece of state called compact that will track whether the navbar is compact or not. So we we'll create here the state compact and set compact. It will be to use state by default it will be zero mean uh, false now here the compact i will send it to the styled nav so it will have a props called compact which has the value of the state compact now using the compact value here i can change the width of the nav here we are setting the currently the width to to a variable named navbar width which is defined in our theme and this variable now has the value of 256 
now I, I will add a condition here using a function which allow me to grab the props then I will check for the prop.compact if it's true I will set the size to 70 pixel if it's not compact I will set the size to the value provided in my seam now I need to toggle this variable the compact variable with the button here the nav toggle so I will add an on click which will set the compact to not compact and I will convert it to number now if I go to my browser and test and if I click on the nav toggle button as you can see it will resize once it is resized first we need to shrink the logo so we we'll keep uh, let's say the s the first letter of the logo then we need to hide the labels of the links so let's do this now i need to send the compact for each of them for the logo i will send the compact then if i go to my logo component here i can use the compact variable to add a condition now in my logo um, i noticed i'm using an h1 which we don't need it now for the uh, logo here i need to keep the first letter visible and hide the rest to do this i will rope the rest of the logo with a span this way i can control this part of the logo and hide it once if the variable compact is true now i can target the span element here in my styles and for the opacity i can use the compact variable to check whether the navigation is in compact state or not so here i will get the prop as the parameter for a function then i will check for p.compact if it's compact which means it's equal to one if not compact it's uh, it will be equal to zero which work perfectly with our opacity here that use the value from 0 to 1 so by returning just compact this will serve as well if it's not compact i need i need to negate this the value and uh, convert it to number so now it will work as expected next for the span i will set the font size just for styling to 500 and the color will be a transparent white then i will uh, add a transition for the opacity with 0.3 second and i'll use the cubic bezier to 0.4011 to add it to add to it some animation perfect now next I will add animation to the nav bar also so it will animate once it changed its uh, width so the same actually the same uh, type of transition I will add it to the nav bar so here we have transition for the width all right next we need to hide the label for for each button if i go to the nav link i need first to send to it the compact state as a variable called also compact so for the nav link here for both nav links compact will be equal to compact and in my nav link here in z style using the compact variable I can hide the span the same way as I did with the logo the span contain actually the label so opacity will rely now on the compact value plus I will add the transition of course for the opacity the same values also it will only work for settings and feedback now 
because I'm not giving the props to the wrapper of these links. So if I close, as you can see, now let's do it for the link group. The same way I will send the compact to the nav link group. In my nav link group, all I have to do is pass it, pass the compact to the each link. So here I will add compact, which will be equal to props dot compact. Now, if I shrink the nav bar, as you can see, with one minor details that is bothering me, is as you can see here the text check the customer orders. If I close, it will wrap into two lines. So to solve this, I can add some rule to the nav link here in the CSS. What I can add is white space or more uh, appropriately uh, for the span, I can add white space to no rope. This will prevent the text from roping on the space. So now, here each time I save, as you can see, it will revert back to the style of the link. It will override my style here in the nav link groups, which I defined the the dense nav links here is supposed to uh, make the links uh, more compact but each time i save this style is overridden somehow the uh, style component uh, while generating this style the style for the nav link is overruling the style here defined in the dense nav link uh, i can solve this issue by adding and and by putting them into an end and end rule which is used by styled component to force these rules now here as you can see now again if i change something in this page and saved uh, the rule will still be applied concerning the compact rules all right now if i closed everything is working perfectly no wrapping for the text now for the style of the logo i see that there's something off here if i go back to the span i set in my logo i set the font size to 500 let's make it 400 oh it's actually font uh, weight now let's add some styles to the uh, back button here, the nav toggle, and the change the arrow position related to whether the nav bar is compact or not. Now here is my button. Now currently my button is inside the nav bar, so I can style it here in the nav bar, or I can extract it into its own component which I prefer, so I will create a new component in my folder navbar, which is inside the layout. So in the navbar, I'll create a component and I will name it nav toggle.js. It will be a functional component. Now, of course, it needs the props and it will return the button. Now, I need the styled and I need to receive from the prop both the compact and the set compact. First, I'll send any props provided to this uh, component, to the button. Here, I'm using the compact, which I will expect to receive it in the props. The same for the set compact. Now I will create a style component. I will name it button. I will replace my current button 
with the style component first the background color will be bronze parent border non the height will be 42 pixel little bit le lesser than the other uh, global links the color will be a transparent white padding will be 0 24 pixel and I will add to it a box shadow similar to other uh, links the box shadow will represent a border at the top it will be transparent white with a 10% transparency let's import the this component into our nav bar and replace this button with it so nav toggle now it needs the compact state and the set compact so uh, for the import it is automatically has been imported now if I go to my browser and here is my button which looking somewhat off oh what I'm doing here in my nav toggle instead of div I need to be a button actually all right so here it is now I need to place it at the left but I will I need to keep it centered in case the nav bar is in compact mode so I will add text align and I using the compact variable I can check I can check if it's compact keep I will, I will keep the alignment center else I will align it to the right so here it is at the right I guess that's it for the toggle button now concerning the animation something is off concerning the concerning the transition I need to add for the nav bar here I need to add the important as I explained to you something is added by my uh, styled component library to the parent styled element which will override my transition so I'm adding important all right now one more thing I noticed here when I set the nav bar to the compact mode now what I need to do is to disable the flex grow on the uh, middle element here on the group of links so they will all be stacked uh, together now I will go to my nav link groups now concerning the flex grow I'll add a condition for it with using the dollar compact sent by the props so I will return p dot compact so if it's if compact is zero which means the nav bar is not compact I need to send one to flex grow so I will negate this value and I will convert it to number now back to my browser all right this is the behavior I'm looking for now as you can see it it is jumping here so the flex grow is jumping let's add a transition for the flex grow so here we need to add a transition for flex grow same for the other transition we use the cubic bezier now it is better still concerning the arrow here 
when it is compact I need the arrow to be rotated so if I go to my nav toggle here I can add a transform with a rotation how it will look now I need to rotate the eye actually so I will target the eye so it's uh, I guess rotate all right this is the rotation we need now by default it will be zero and in case if it's compact so I'll check for the compact variable I will if it's compact I will set the rotation to 180 if not it will be the rotation will be zero and I will add the rotation here rotate so and then I will add a transition for the rotation of course oh I forgot to put the degree with the value it's not the rotate I need to set the transition on the transform and here it is now I will set the the function to linear I think it will work better in uh, in this case all right maybe I'll make it faster all right so it's much better now when I resize my window the nav bar is jumping when I when I'm on desktop so to fix this uh, behavior I will add in the nav bar component I will add a transition for the transform I'm already adding here a transition but it's only available when we are not on desktop now I will not want this to be available also on the desktop so here besides the width transition I will add transition for the transform now I can use the all but uh, using the all is can result in an unpredictable behavior and it will affect the performance so I will keep the width what I can do is copy this and add a comma now I will add one for the transform which will work now but I can do better here what I can do is add a transition property and define the width and the transform then I will add a transition duration which will be for both 0.3 second and a transition function which will use the cubic bezier and I can add important for the timing function actually I need to add important for all of my transition On the mobile or tablets I don't want this uh, compact behavior to be available so first I will hide the uh, toggle button for the compact so in my nav toggle component I will import the break points as BP and I will add a condition here a media query if we are on mobile or or iPad I will display none so max width I mean max width so if I check my browser again I don't see now the button if it's already toggled so if it's in compact mode and I resize to iPad or mobile now I don't want this to be still displayed as compact so in my nav bar 
where I'm setting the width, I will force it on mobile or desktop. I will force the width to have the width from our theme. So I will use the nav bar width. So this will override the 70 pixel here in case if it's compact. So the width applied. Next, now in my nav links group, I will add a media query using the breakpoint specified in our theme. So here I will add, add media for the max width. I'll check it against the BP dot desktop if we're on mobile or ipad i will set the flex grow to one and for the nav links same for the logo i need to show the labels so in my nav link also i'll import the breakdown and i will add a media query similar to nav link links group so I copy it and add it here in my nav link at the end to override everything. So first I will target the span and for the opacity it will be forced to 1. The same for the logo. If I go to my logo. I will add the media query at the end and I will import also the breakpoint SBP. Now the span opacity also need to be one. All right. Now if I check it that it works fine. Now if I go to my desktop and if I am in compact mode and resize to mobile, now the compact mode is disabled. Concerning the nav bar, we are almost done. So everything is working as we want. One more thing is left. Now if it's in compact mode and I click, let's say on the home page, as you can see, the navigation is resetting concerning the its state so every time i click a link it is re-rendering why because we have made uh, a major mistake here concerning the layout that holds the header and the nav bar and the main content so we are using this layout here on each page and those page are route components so each time we are clicking a new link the page are re-rendering so we don't want this behavior we use the layout inside every page because some pages like the sign in page don't need a layout that's why we have imported the layout for each page but this behavior seemed to be not efficient what we will do we will remove the layout from each page and add it to the app. Now, once we are adding it to the app, it will be applied to all our pages, including the sign in page. So, in this case, when the user is in the sign in page, the user is not authenticated. And this is a problem for our layout, which includes the header, and the header needs information from signed in users. Plus, we don't want to show these links for user who is not logged in so what we will do in the layout we'll add a condition we'll check for the user if the user is not regist is not uh, signed in then we will remove the sidebar and the header we will just keep the main content for this work well with our current situation where we are using the grid and we are relying on the content for the sidebar and the header to set the 
grid sizes for these columns so if we remove them no problem will happen the grid will adapt and the content will fill the whole screen so let's start by removing from each component the layout all right now in our app.js we'll import the layout And we'll use it to wrap the our switch here. So we'll use the layout. Now we don't need the class app. We, we, we are not using it anywhere. Now if I go back to my application, everything seemed to work fine. Now if in case I'm not signed in, as you can see, I'm getting an error concerning the email so in my layout.js i will import use os from os context which we have created in a previous video here i can get the user info constant os equal use os and I can add a condition here. So if os.user if is available, then I will render those components. Else I will not render them. So they will be rendered only if a user is registered. Now if I save and reload again as i as you see no error i have returned to my sign in page again if i sign in with all right i get back to my layout now if i if i go to the home page the state of the nav bar is conserved so we are sure now it is not rendering One more thing I want to fix here. Now I am in the products page, but uh, my product link in my navbar is not styled. The active state has no style, so we'll fix this now. Remember that we are using the nav link from React Router DOM. With the nav link, the active link will have a class active. I will rely on this class to style our active links here in our component nav link we we'll check for the active class if it's active we'll color it with the primary color all right so since this is the active link it will be colored red now if i go to the home page it is not colored if i return to products it is colored now in my, as you can see here, we have some error in the links. So, so I will go to my book list and I will fix the link naming. Now we are changing the links from books to two products. So here in my book item, I will change it to products. All right, nothing happened because if I go to my app.js, here we're using products, products with S. Now the same link here, we are using the same pattern of link, just we're adding here a variable. So to make this work, we need to add to the only products link, the word exact. This way it only match slash products without anything appended to it so now our link will work as you can see now we're in the product details and the product is product link is still active all right what is left next is to style the here the content so we will create a component called page and we'll put this content in that component which will add some padding and some uh, styles now to style 
the content of a page will create a page component here in my UI I will create a new component I will name it page now this component will require a title as a prop and we'll grab the children and we'll return a div element will pass to it the rest of the props and it will contain a header inside of it there will be the title wrapped in an h1 then a divider so we'll grab the divider from our ui folder now here we'll use div because we already have a header We'll have another div for the content which will display the children now we'll import styled from styled component and we'll create two components one for each of those divs so we first we'll name it header it will be styled dot div the min height we will have will be 38 pixel and a padding of 0 24 pixel for left and right now another we'll name it content and we'll have the padding so we can replace here the header and content now we'll export this component and we'll use it for our pages for example, there's the book details. And here, instead of the div, I'll use the page. For the title, I'll give it the, the text for the H2. The same for the book list. And for the home. Now for the sign in to. Now if we check our browser, now we have an error here. Divider is not exported from the slash divider. This is in the page. Oh. Or I can use from dot slash because I have the index.js with export all the other component inside the folder ui so here is in my browser i have the layout better with some spacing from left and right now uh, i will style the page for the list uh, book if i go to my book item here where i'm where i'm listing each row i can import the styled component I'll create a constant item now I will create a display of grid the grid template columns will be will use the repeat repeat 3 1 fr so it will create three columns with a size of 1 fr we'll add max width of 700 pixel padding of 10 pixel a border bottom uh, it will be black light uh, black so uh, 0 0 0 slash 50 percent here i will replace the div with item and remove the class i will reduce the to five percent all right much better now for my book list maybe i can add spacing here below the button so here i can add some br to br just to get by later on we'll work on it per to make perfect layout so everything is great this is the end of 
this video i hope you enjoy it if you do give it a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of uh, video concerning front end and react and uh, node.js later on so uh, see you in the next video